Each year, most Polish national days were fervently celebrated. These new Victorians could not stop thinking of and praying for a peaceful means to end the oppression in their country of birth. In 1980 marked the 40th anniversary of Katyn, recalling the many mass graves of Polish officers, public servants and intellectuals massacred by Stalin's communist regime. They numbered 25,000. After an introductory speech by the President of the Polish Community Council of Victoria, Mr. Piotr Kozioł, the monument was unveiled and blessed.
the introduction of martial law on the 13th of December 1981 in Poland and the detention of members of the free trade union movement, Solidarity, sparked protests from around the world. In Melbourne also, the Polish community and other ethnic groups, as well as leaders of the Liberal and Labour parties and of the trade unions, raised their voices against the Soviet tyranny. This state of war has not been declared against another country or another race, but against the people of Poland by its own rulers with the support of the Soviet government. Last Sunday we have heard the news which fills with sadness the hearts of all decent people. The Polish Communist authorities have claimed military control over the nation, declaring the state of war, arresting tens of thousands of free trade union solidarity activists, closing to traffic Polish airspace, and cutting all telex and telephone links with the outside world. It appears that the nation responded to this act of violence with strikes and sit-ins. The armed forces replied with gunfire. Once again, the streets of the Polish cities were splattered with Polish blood. Prominent intellectuals, writers, scientists, university students, and solidarity sympathizers share common jail cells right now. Polish riot police drove the highly respected members of the Polish Academy of Sciences out of the Academy's building in Warsaw into the snow-covered street with one swift baton charge. Most of them were arrested and their fate is still unknown. This is a day of immense sadness, but it's also a day of anger but don't let it be a day without hope. The slavery of communism will be destroyed. Not tomorrow, but it will be destroyed. It can't survive. In country after country, liberty and the freedom of conscience of the individual has been extinguished as we see the operation of the dictatorships of the left and of the right. And I've just had delivered to me a message that the Prime Minister has written this morning. And I'll read that message to your rally of the Federation of Polish Organisations in Victoria today. And the Prime Minister says, you are meeting here today to express your justifiable indignation over the recent developments in Poland. May I express at the outset my deep sympathy and understanding for all of you who have relatives or friends in Poland. All Australians must share your grief at the suffering which the Polish nation is enduring now. To ensure that essential relief could be sent to Poland, the Commonwealth Government, under the leadership of Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser, donated $1 million to the Help Poland Live appeal. The Polish community collected another $1,200,000.
After the brutal crushing of the Solidarity Movement in Poland, many thousands of young Poles sought freedom abroad. Over 10,000 of them settled in Victoria. Over 50,000 people in Victoria claim to have Polish ancestry. As a middle-sized migrant community, it is spread over a variety of age groups. 1,300 are school-aged children. 30% of Poles have obtained a tertiary education. Some 60% of Poles in Victoria are Catholic. 15% are Jewish. 10% belong to other Christian and non-Christian religions. Over 95% have become Australian citizens. Over 82% live in Melbourne. They can also be found in Geelong, Ballarat, Gippsland and in all other regions of Victoria. Despite economic and social difficulties and despite the Australian assimilation policy, the first Polish organisation was established in Melbourne as early as 1949. Soon after, a number of other organisations began to appear. Ex-servicemen's, social, cultural, educational, self-help, professional, sporting, youth and religious organisations. In 1962, several established organisations decided to create an organisational superstructure. Thus, the Federation of Polish Organisations in Victoria was born. In 1983, it changed its name to the Polish Community Council of Victoria Incorporated. Today, the council represents over 40 organisations with about 5,000 members. It also cooperates with 26 Polish senior citizens clubs. The Council's activities include advocacy with the Commonwealth State and local governments. It also organises the annual Festival of Polish Culture. very important. I commend you all. Thank you very much for joining us all at Federation Square and keep up the good work supporting your Polish community organisations every day of the year. Thank you very much. Some organisations, like the Australian Institute for Polish Affairs or Australian Polish Community Services, are not affiliated with the Polish Community Council of Victoria. The first Polish centre in Victoria was called the Polish Children's Home. Bought in 1952 by the Sisters of the Resurrection, with the help of the Polish Catholic community, it was inspired by a Jesuit priest and leader, Father Józef Janusz. This home in Essendon was dedicated to Polish children in need. It served as a creche, orphanage, junior school and boarding school for over 20 years.
The visit of Archbishop Daniel Mannix to officially open the children's home in September 1952 was perceived to be a recognition of the many blessings and challenges brought to the local Catholic community by the new Polish migrants. Later, the house was extended to include an order-owned primary school, which still serves the local Catholic community. Sodality House in Richmond, now the Polish Jesuit Pastoral Centre, was purchased by Father Józef Janos in 1953 with the help of the Catholic Church of Melbourne, Polish Sodality, St Ignatius Parish of Richmond and the Polish Catholic community. The first Polish community home, named Kostrzuszko House, was bought in Parkville in 1955. In 1962, it was moved to 313 Latrobe Street in the city. It became the official address of the Polish community in Victoria and the central venue of its cultural and social life. It provided a home for many leading organisations, for a Saturday school, folkloric groups, scouts, guides and youth groups, and it was a vital information and social support centre. Due to the collapse of the Pyramid Building Society in 1990, during a redevelopment of the building, this very important property was lost, causing extreme pain to the entire Polish community. White Eagle House, the biggest Polish centre in Victoria, is owned by the Polish Association in Geelong. Its history starts in 1961, when a small centre was purchased in the city. In 1980, the new and larger property was bought by the Polish Association and turned into a centre which serves both the Polish and local communities. <laughs> <laughs> it is home for a Polish school, folkloric group, sports club, senior citizens club, choir, and many cultural and social activities. The foundation of Millennium House in Footscray marked the celebration of 1,000 years of Polish Christianity. It is the pride of the Polish people in the western suburbs. In the 1970s and 80s, it hosted the largest Polish Saturday school and the youth group, Siganeria. Currently, Millennium 
house accommodates the Polish Weekly, the Polish Museum and Archives, and several senior citizens' clubs. The Polish Centre in Ardea was opened in 1974 by a Polish charitable organisation. Dedicated to John Paul II, it housed an energetic local community, a Saturday school, a folkloric and vocal group, and a soccer club. Today, it's the centre for a senior citizens club, Polish archives, and it also hosts artistic and sports groups visiting Australia. Copernicus House in Ballarat was blessed in 1973 on the occasion of the 500th anniversary of the birth of the great Polish astronomer. And since then, it has been a very important centre for the Polish Association in Ballarat. The Polish Ex-Servicemen Centre in Geelong has served Polish ex-servicemen and the local community since the mid-1960s. Polish House, Serena, in Roville, was officially opened in 1984 and has become a heart for the relatively young Polish community in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne. Erected and administered by the Eastern District's Polish Association, it hosts a very large Polish Saturday school, two folkloric youth groups, a children's choir, scouting troops, a theatrical group, a library, bar and restaurant, and the largest senior citizens club. It is a very important centre for Polish cultural, sports, social and educational activities. The Sports and Recreation Centre in Albion, since 1990, has played a leading role among the Polish community in the western suburbs. It is a very important cultural, social and sports venue and is the home ground for the soccer club Polonia. It also hosts the youngest independent Polish Saturday school, two choirs, a large senior citizens club, a bridge club, bar and restaurant, and the social club, Rodzina. And since 1990, the annual Polish Sports Festival. Stig's Club in Richmond, though it does not belong to the Polish community, has served it well for many years. <laughs> Unique and much loved by young and old, the Polana Camp in Hillsville has hosted Polish children since 1961. Owned by the Polish Association in Melbourne since 1963, it has played a very important role in the history of the Polish community in Victoria. The Tatry Ski Lodge and Polski at Mount Bula, owned by Polish ski clubs, are very popular among the Polish community. <laughs> 